I'm at my booth at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, and for this video, it's mostly going to be a voiceover, but I wanted to show you my booth in person and talk about how busy it got last year just to get from that door to my booth here. Last year at points was taking up to 15, 20 minutes, some people said, which is not ideal. Luckily, that only lasted for a little while, and hopefully this year the crowds will be moving a little bit more smoothly. But now I'm going to switch over to a voiceover and just show you some of the things at uh, the festival. It's a few days after the Fiber Festival in Rhinebeck, and I just have had some time to think about it. I took some notes after the fact. It was really a great festival. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what happened at that festival. I'll talk a little bit about my future products, and I'll talk a little bit about my business, Streaming Robots. So buckle up and here we go. First off at Rhinebeck, the thing that's the most fun for me is really just talking with a bunch of you from the community. It's, I get to see and talk to hundreds and hundreds of people at my booth and that's what I spend most of my time. A lot of you gave me some great feedback and it was just fun discussions and uh, chatting with all of you. Uh, I even ended up signing a few things uh, which, you know, feel, I mean, I always put a happy face and try to make it a cheerful time, but like inside that really feels awkward. I don't really uh, know why people want my signature and things on their spinning wheels, but hey, if that's what people want, I'm happy to do it. It just sort of feels a little odd to me, but still fun nonetheless. Uh, I also talked to a few of my wholesalers that were there, and that's really fun. They also have some great feedback, and they really have a different perspective than customers. I think I get equally good feedback, but it is very different feedback from like uh, the people who are selling my products versus the people who are using my products. And I think that you know both types are are very useful. It, it's kind of almost cheating. It seems like the bigger and bigger this community gets the more feedback I get, which makes my job almost more and more easy. So uh, thanks for all of that. So as you can see, I'm just walking around at the festival, looking at the goats and all of the fiber products. It's a pretty, pretty great place to be. I did only see, or in this video, I'm only showing a small fraction of the things that I actually saw but uh, hopefully you can get a, a feel for the sorts of things that are there one of the booths that I didn't visit in this video because I didn't know where it was yet was the Daedalus booth uh, so Daedalus and Hansen are two big e-spinners and um, while technically we're competitors I now I had talked to Hansen um, people before but at this festival I got to talk to the Daedalus people for the first time and I mean, they're just so cool. Uh, Rebecca and Dave, I think that was their names. Um, they're the people who started it and the owners and they're just such great people. I mean, before this, I worked in uh, big tech. I, I designed uh, mobile phones and the chips that went inside of those. And it was such a competitive industry and things and, and different companies really never talked about talk together. And you know, the people were pretty separated, but I feel like in this industry, like just Everybody gets along. I mean, uh, their products are pretty different from mine, even though they're ear spinners. And I just think they complement each other um, at their booth. It was amazing. I mean, they have way more versions. And um, since they're 3D printing them, they can do a lot of different colors. And that just made for a really beautiful booth. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I really wish them the best. And uh, it's I just am happy that, you know, even though technically we're competitors, I, I think that the market's big enough that we can all benefit. And, you know, the more people who are out there spinning, the better in my mind. So I'm happy that they're they're out there. OK, so I'll move on now to some of my future products and sort of what's happening right now. So the next thing that's coming out is actually completely done. I have uh it well it is the electric eel wheel cone winder so i did a kickstarter for it last year and it's finally shipping now or very soon 
there's actually two separate shipping containers. The first one is going to be used to fulfill all the Kickstarter orders. And then about a month after that one, I'll get a whole bunch more. And those will be for my store. So hopefully the Kickstarter ones are going to be shipping in November. And then in December, I'm hoping to have the second batch so that we can uh, ship them out uh, before Christmas maybe. But no promises. But uh, if you're interested, the best way to be notified is the email uh, newsletter that I have. It's linked to at the bottom of my website at www.dreamingrobots.com. So um, hopefully, uh, well, I know a lot of you have signed up for the Kickstarter and yours are going to ship out first. But um, after that, uh, hopefully those ones in the store will be available before Christmas as well. Let's see. So the next project is something that I've been working on for a long time, but really wasn't sure when it was going to be coming out. And then I had to accelerate the program because the electric eel wheel 6.0 was selling so well that um, I was going to run out of stock long before I thought I would. So uh, I've worked on that electric eel wheel 6.1. I still owe you guys a video for the improvements, um, but there's nothing massively different. It's not the kind of thing that I would recommend people upgrade to. I mean, you can if you want, but um, it's not going to be any massive improvements. It's a, a lot of little things that people suggested to make it, a, you know, a little better, a little faster if you want to do that. But, um, you know, it's very similar to the Electro EO Wheel 6. It actually uses the same plastic molds. I'm just uh, modifying a few of the parts to fit a little bit better and uh, add a few fun pieces of functionality. Uh, there, there is one new mold, but um, anyways, I'll talk about all of those details in a, in a separate video. But that should be coming out um, in the second quarter, so maybe the April to June time frame of next year. Uh, the other big thing that I've been working on, and this is where I'm spending most of my engineering time these days, is a, a drum carter. So this is something I'm pretty convinced. I, I definitely have to see how the first prototype turns out. I actually have it mostly assembled in my basement. I'm waiting for a few more parts. But um, the first prototype, as always, is pretty rough. But I'm going to put up a video about it on YouTube so people can see what it is and I can get some more feedback about it. One of the interesting things is this first prototype is going to have both a hand crank and a motor and people can choose which ones to use. Uh, I personally think that the electric motor is way more useful but um, we'll see what uh, the community thinks. I, I mean I could include both but I could also just uh, include the electric motor if everybody agrees that that's sort of the best way to do it. It doesn't uh, add too much cost. I mean, it's certainly going to be the least expensive drum carter out there. I've actually been, I spent a lot of time uh, looking for and then working with a manufacturer that they didn't exactly make um, carding cloth. They made a, a tool sort of similar, but uh, I worked with them and uh, got their tooling up and gave them a whole bunch of specifications on what the cloth needed. And I, I got the first batch back a while ago, and it's really good. Uh, it's pretty similar. It, I mean, it's very similar to other carding cloth out there. And I think it's going to let me get the price of the machine down a lot lower than uh, other machines out there. Uh, I also just by the fact of how my manufacturing is done with a lot of plastics and um, doing large batches, that's going to also just get my prices down as well compared to other drum carters out there. So we'll have to, I don't really know what the price is going to be yet. I'm still working those kinds of things out, but uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, how that project is going away. And hopefully there'll be a video in the not too distant future about this drum carter project just to sort of show you that first prototype and, and get the ideas of flowing. After the drum carter, uh, the thing that I'm probably going to release unless something else comes up is going to be this electric eel wheel pro. And I have done several videos on that. I, I think I've actually, you know, I'm, I've been working on that quite a lot and I think I actually made some pretty significant mistakes with it. So basically, 
I tried to do too many things. I actually had this huge list of things I wanted to try, and I'm pretty committed to trying all of those things now. So I'm working through that list, but the things that I thought were gonna be the most important are turning out to be the most important. So I probably should have done less things. I, I've made this mistake before where I try to make something that's um, got too many features, too many improvements, and it just ends up taking longer than it should and um, is sort of more complicated to use than people have wanted. So I'm definitely being uh, pretty proactive about cutting out features after I test them and, and have verified that they're not actually adding too much to the product. Like a big one, I mean, there's a lot of things that I don't I haven't really talked about much. Maybe I'll talk, do a video about them, but there's there's a lot <laughs> here that I've been trying. But one of them that I have talked a lot about is sort of these load cells, which lets you put a scale into the bottom. And, you know, at the end of the day, it just wasn't going to add enough for the complexity of the feature. And there were some downsides, like because it was on these um semi-mobile feet that it was going to be able to um, move around a little bit more on surfaces and the software to read a scale um, that's kind of vibrating and was going to get really complicated so that's an example of one of the features that i really wanted to test out but didn't work out so it's getting cut and it's not going to add anything to the end product but it, it ends up consuming a lot of my time um, and after the Electric Eel Will Pro, um, I have a huge list of other things that I, I want to work on, but these are really far off, and I don't really want to talk about them until I'm a little more sure that they're actually going to move on to a, a product that I will actually ship. So I'll leave it at that for now. So Again. the last major topic that I wanted to cover in this video is just a little bit about uh, my business which is called Dreaming Robots. It's where I sell the electric eel wheel tools. So financially last year uh, was absolutely um, amazing. It was almost too amazing. It kind of made me consider lowering some of my prices but um, this year is not nearly as great as last year and I think that comes down uh, a lot to the fact that I didn't run any new Kickstarters. I was working really hard on getting the cone winder uh, through manufacturing and uh, getting some of the um, yeah. other products <laughs> to this prototyping stage, the, the ones that I mentioned earlier. So uh, because of that, no new Kickstarter projects, which really um, makes the bottom line, uh, the business go down a little bit, but that's okay. It's still a very good year. And, um, you know, really all I want to do is have enough uh, money to support my family. We like to go on vacations a couple times a year. We don't really buy that much stuff. We don't have fancy cars or anything. So I'm just pretty happy uh, making a good living in this business. And the other thing that's really important to me is just growing the fiber community. Those are really the two things that I'm trying to do with this business, grow the community and support my family. So um, the best way of me growing the community is making really good tools uh, that are affordable. And I think that just helps get them into more hands. And that's, you know, something that's always been important to me. Even before I did this, I always wanted to work at companies where the products were affordable to the consumer instead of, you know, some high-end item that you know only a few people use i'd much rather use a an affordable tool that uh, a lot of people can uh, have access to another thing that i've spent a decent amount of time with on my business which is kind of sad uh, but uh is uh i mean yeah it's not I guess, it's not really sad that's overstating it but um i've actually uh switched my company to an s corporation which is just like a legal thing in the United States to help with taxes and it's really complicated like the taxes in this country are just pretty bizarre the reason I did it is my accountant said that switching to this kind of uh, entity will save me a whole bunch of money and will more than pay for her to do all of the um, additional accounting that's required for the taxes and uh, the fact that just by making your taxes more complicated, you pay less taxes, it just is broken in my mind. Like there should be a system where you pay taxes and it's 
always as simple as they can make it, but it seems like they make it as complicated as they can, um, which is just it's not efficient. It's not the way I would choose it, but it's also not a battle that I'm going to fight. I'm just going to play along with the system and I'm going to hire an accountant to work as my expert to help me follow that system, I guess. And it's not an area I want to spend a lot of time. So that's how I'm treating it. Uh, but it is something that um, took a bunch of time to set up for my business. Um, I changed insurances um, for my products when I'm doing that. You know, there's all sorts of uh, businessy kind of things like that that you know end up taking up more time than I want but when I'm doing those changes I'm always trying to make them so that I spend time up front and then after that uh, it's much easier uh, going forward so like uh, I have to file payroll for me so I ended up picking a company that was like almost no extra work now and they just uh, you know pay out my payroll for me uh, instead of me having to spend time every few month, weeks uh, to, to file a payroll. So it ended up working pretty well. And um, I'm always picking cheap options and affordable solutions so that I can keep my overhead low and keep my products affordable. So all of these changes, while they sound like, oh, maybe it, things are going to get more expensive, it, actually the reason I'm doing them is so I can keep my prices low. And, uh, um, you know, that's a big part of why I spend time in these areas in the business. It's just to, to minimize that overhead. So I think that covers most of what I wanted to. I had handwritten a few notes on a napkin and that seems to hit all the highlights. So. Uh, hopefully you guys found this interesting. Uh, definitely want to thank you for listening. And if you ever have any uh, questions or comments, you know, feel feel free to uh, leave them in the comments here or uh, contact me from my website or email, whatever's best for you. I'm always uh, interested in seeing what you guys think.